Welcome to the Automate and Grow podcast, brought to you by Cloud Advisory. On this podcast, we talk about ways to grow, innovate, and automate your business using strategy, technology, and tactics that we learn from interviews with experts and business leaders alike. Without further ado, here's the next episode of Automate and Grow. Entrepreneurial Nardwar? Probably no, not. Maybe. He I, I interviews have to wear like, like a, He just like does crazy research though. Yeah, and he interviews a lot of really big people. He gets like great interviews. Try to not... What's nice about this is there's absolutely no format or precedent for quality. Because <laughs> it's the first one. It's the first one. Okay, well we can set the bar high. Okay, the bar, the bar is high because already the lighting is better than I would have accepted. <laughs> I would have been in a dungy little yellow room, but Kim... We're trying, we're trying. I mean, we can warm it up. No, now I mean, it's we good can, now. Oh you have to, you can tone it down later. This is like a professional color office. Color correct later. Live from... Workhouse. Workhouse. Formerly Deloitte. Yeah, but I don't know if, we're, I don't know if that's a... Thing. <laughs> Edit. Yeah. Out. Well, whatever, it doesn't matter. Yeah, so Workhouse, one of the... One of the now it's three locations. It's, it's a co-working space. It's a co-working space in Toronto. Uh, you can work here by yourself or with a company and rent a desk or just like sit in the lounge area and yeah there's offices an entrepreneurial hotspot in the middle of toronto yeah totally it's right down a bay in wellington and lots of entrepreneurs teens startups established businesses all kinds of stuff nice mm -hmm. and what took, what made you choose workhouse i actually know the owner so i've known them for quite a while they first started with a location that was more more east so by st louis market oh yeah i love it down there yeah me i used too. to live down there that's oh, yeah? fun yeah, exactly, right there. Olden so, days. It's a great area. And, and uh, 90s. <laughs> <laughs> so I started out there, and I, I knew the owners, and I mean, I still know them. And so I started uh, working out of that location, and they expanded and get, got new locations and oh, more wow. locations. And yeah, it's Damn. been a couple years now. So. All right, so in true Nardwar style, who are you and what do you do? Uh, my name is I Kim. I always want to say that. <laughs> my name is Kim Parnell, and I am one of the co-founders of Blank. Blank? What's Blank? Blank is a platform that allows the technology that automates app development. So it does all the designing and developing of an app. You use the A word. Automate. I did, yes. Yeah. This is automate and grow. Yes, yes, yes. Well, first episode. Mm -hmm. Take one. <laughs> yeah. So Blank is automating the process of building an app. Mm -hmm. Have you been involved in the development of apps prior to this? Yeah, that's actually how it got started. So I had... I had an idea to make an app. I wanted to do a digital business card app. Mm -hmm. And I kind of went all in on that. So I had the idea for a while, and then I had a bunch of people around me who encouraged me to do it, and they said this is a great idea. So I sought out a person to develop the app. It mm -hmm. was someone that I actually had worked with at a previous startup. Not my own, but mm -hmm. I was like an employee at a startup. And I paid a lot of money to have the app developed. Of course you I did. spent like $55,000. And it took uh, about nine months to mm -hmm. do an iOS and an Android version. Um, at that time, I had made the choice that I didn't want a business partner. I said I just wanted to do it myself. I was maybe a little concerned with decisions taking too long or sure. you know the constant back and forth. Yep. That sometimes happens Makes when sense. you have a business partner. So I said, I know what I want, and I just want uh, someone to help me build it. So I decided to hire a developer. But you don't know what you don't know. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> exactly. And so in the process of getting the app built, I tried to be a very focused and level-headed CEO and not keep changing the scope of work on the developer. Oh, you're like the worst customer ever. No, but, no, I said I, I, I wanted to. Try. But, right, no, but. That's hard, though. No, no, but I did. You, you did? I did, oh, okay. yeah, so I kept it Sorry, the same. Sorry, I take it all back. You're a good customer. However, <laughs> a good customer doesn't always make 
the best entrepreneur. And when I say customers, because I've developed a lot of other right. people's apps. Yeah, and so and you know how project. problematic it's it is crazy. when yeah. every time you're coming it's back really and asking you to change something and what might seem like a small change to someone who it's is not developing, deal. it's a big yeah. deal, right? And it changes a lot of other underlying things. So, yeah, exactly. so I kept the scope very much the same. Anything that was going to be too much of a change, I didn't do. But though that meant I got my app, well, both versions of the app in you know in the allotted amount of time, it also meant that after nine months, there were so many things that I wanted to change. Mm, yep. So now I had an app that like I thought was crap. Like oh, I didn't no. even like it. I thought yeah. it was it was embarrassing to me. So, so you don't have a digital business card app? Well, interest sort of. So that app did get built. It was in both of the app stores, and I just, like I said, I didn't even want to show anybody. Right around that time, the iPhone 6 Plus came out. Oh, okay. So it was a much bigger screen, mm -hmm. which meant that my app didn't work on it. Yeah, you have to redo and the And it graphics. crashed on all the iPhone yep. 6s, 6 Plus. And, I mean, that was annoying because often the people with the new phones are, like, early adopters. Mm -hmm. So those kind of go hand in hand, so that kind of sucked. And there was a lot of things I needed changed in the app, and I had no more money left. So I said, okay, I guess now I have to find a technical co-founder mm -hmm. to help me with this yeah. and I met a couple different people but eventually ended up meeting who is now my current partner, Paul, and met him and he had this product that was a back-end automation tool Oh, okay. and so we came together originally to use his back-end tool to help recreate Carded, which is what the app is called. And Wait one sec. Oh, I shouldn't download it? It's not available anymore. Oh. So, I took it. And we were going to recreate it and we actually came up with some some new ideas of how to make the app slightly different and better, and I thought it was great. But during that process, we kind of were collaborating and figuring out if how much of it we could actually automate it. Is it more than just the back end? The that process we can of developing, right? So if you have a there different there? thing you want to tweak, you're saying you could change it on the fly, right? So I mean, the, the, the back end and the front end are kind of their own components right. in, app, in app development. So we had already done kind of the back end automation stuff. Oh, here already had that. And he was one, he had been working towards and thinking about if you could automate the entire process and he had some theories about that. And again, we were building, using all this technology to build my app. Mm -hmm. And about three months in, I kind of just, I went to bed one night with an idea. And sometimes when I have a very, an idea that's going to change things a lot, mm -hmm. I like to sleep on it and make okay. sure I still think it's a good idea in the morning. Because <laughs> sometimes I'll have a great idea and then mm -hmm. I go to bed and I'm like, that was crap. That's a horrible, idea. terrible idea. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I went to bed and I woke up the next day. And I still had the same thought, so I just, you know, I called him up and I said, look, we're, we're doing this wrong. We're, we're ch chasing a vertical, we're chasing after this one app when mm -hmm. you have this automation platform that can automate a lot of, a lot, you can automate the back end for everyone, not just me, not just my Cause, app. Because you're saying when you look at most apps that are being developed, they have common blocks of capabilities, so even though the, the graphics look different. Yeah, so at this point, it was still the back-end tool, though. At this point, it was still just oh, the back-end. Okay. So you were developing, like, a back-end as a service. Exactly. It was it. It, pretty much what it was, yeah. So we are, he, and he already had that. So I was like, this is the product. It's not, you know, my app idea. Like, this is the product. So we kind of moved forward trying to to launch it as a developer tools product, which is a really challenging space. Very challenging, yeah. Uh, we tried that for a bit, um, but it was also during that process that, and during that time, that time period where... My partner, Paul, he had come up with some new theories on how to automate the whole process, front end, back end of the app development, um, and he was testing some of those, and that had been about a year of checking if that will all work and doing all the research, and also me like going out and finding all these case studies and, and checking the market and making sure that this was actually something that we could sell. And earlier this year, we had we basically were able to prove it all out and make like a prototype and so all we right, built Carded cool. yep. with Blank. Oh, I see. Okay, yeah. got it, got it, got it. So who knows, we'll left, maybe we'll launch it one day as like a fun <laughs> internal product. Is this like the never ending app development product? Um, <laughs> I, I, I know, know you get a launch maybe. too, right? Yeah. Well, I mean it's Carded itself is, is... Are you a perfectionist? Sometimes, sometimes. but I don't think I'm a perfectionist to a fault. Um, but I mean, I kind you of can use... like go your babies and see. Oh yeah, I kind of use not. like. I don't know if that's a good analogy. But... <laughs> like go over your babies and, and see, see if they the... float. Really? Unless you're a seahorse, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. A seahorse. Yeah. I'm gonna do one thing. Yep. Story. That's awesome. Imagine I like. I never like do live videos. Like, I should just do a live love, videos. You love live videos. And I never do them. Oh, you don't. No. I wonder what happened if I went live right now. Probably. I feel like there'd be like a three people. people. No, no, because I never do them. Oh, the people so don't expect gonna, you to do that. It's not going to pop up, I don't think. You probably need to train people. And you need to, it has to, 
like tell people that you're going to be live, right? Yeah, it gives you like little notifications. What is up? Oh, there's a couple people. I'm filming an interview right now, so just you know, saying what people wanna, what people wanna know. Yeah, we're actually do doing from, a live. What do you wanna know from Kim Parnell? Hello. I never. I was saying I never do live, so I don't even know if it's gonna. Uh, Look, there's people. What on. the fuck is going on with? Mike? I told you. <laughs> That's yeah, a good question. The, wow, who asked that? <laughs> Josh. Wow. This person. Josh. Yes. That's a very frank question. Yeah, no, it's a good question, though. It is a good question. Josh might not be Canadian. I don't know. Josh, are you Canadian? Why? Because it's so blunt of a yeah. question. <laughs> I had a guy in the street that I tell you. No. I was looking down at my phone outside of WeWork trying to figure out where to go next. Mm -hmm. He stopped and he started giving me directions randomly. He goes, What do you need? <laughs> That's so. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm back in Toronto. That's so Canadian. It's definitely Canadian. I, I wonder it. if we can do this. Like, this yes, totally Blake is still happening. I hope you guys can hear me because it goes faster if you put a deposit there. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, things still happening. We are raising money right now, so we got to build the rest of the platform. But we're raising money right now, and we have a we have a prototype that I will be able to show soon, which is really exciting. I might even see it. Yeah. Do you want to? Who are you? Do you want to introduce yourself? I'm Michael Devolano. Hi. Do you want to know more? No. Yeah. Well, Michael's book coming out. Well, out now. It's out. It's out. Yeah. yeah so doing he's... a book launch in Toronto tonight for Automate and Grow. It's really about kind of two things. One is how do you take transformational digital technologies, there's six of them that we identify, and apply it to your industry problem. So in other words, how do you innovate in a unique way using digital technology, which you're doing with Blank. And then the other part is um, once you're satisfied with your product, how do you automate marketing, sales, and customer support? Mm -hmm. Awesome. So that's tonight. If you guys are in Toronto and you want to come to we work on Richmond Street. 240 Richmond West. Yeah. What are my thoughts on cryptocurrency? I have a lot. That's a kind of a Wait, I was going to ask that. Okay. We, okay. Can, you can, we can do double yeah. Right. So I don't what, know. What are your thoughts on cryptocurrency? I think cryptocurrency is, is we're only in the beginning. This is like we're in the very, very early, early days. I mean, this is a pretty long answer. Uh, maybe I should do like a whole separate I, I would like to participate thing. in that. Yeah, if, maybe if I'll do like a... Because I, I feel like crypto is two things. It's blockchain. Right? Mm -hmm. Which is how do you digital ledger for agreements, but then obviously the currency part. And I think people are getting whipped up around Bitcoin. Right. But that's like just one thing. Yeah, I mean, so. It's like a bellwether, right, of all the other stuff that's going on. Bitcoin's interesting because Bitcoin is, is a crypto, but it's also a protocol, right? So mm -hmm. Bitcoin itself and in, in the Bitcoin platform, there's a protocol and there's an embedded cryptocurrency. A lot of the other ones are, are slightly different, but I. Whoever just. Uh, yeah, I'm interested in doing. Anyone who wants me to come talk about cryptocurrency, I'm probably interested. Just ask me because I talk about it for fun, <laughs> like by myself. So I actually hurt my my hip, so I can't really do a lot of workout right now, which sucks. And then I started swimming to at least not feel like shit because I feel like shit when I don't work out. Um, but swimming helps. Yeah, um, I think I'll get back to this. You interview. do yoga? Yeah, I do yoga. I did also yoga this morning. I do yo I do yoga every day. I have many hip woes. We can share stories on that. Yeah. Yeah. And I also did. Um, I did Wim Hof breathing this morning. Did you really? Yeah, I did. No. Yeah. Okay. Have you ever done it? I haven't. No. It's it's pretty did, interesting. Did you actually learn it from Wim Hof? I wish. Let's do that. I wish I learned it from Wim Hof. I did. Let's, I did. I learned it from Wim Hof, but like on on YouTube, a right? YouTube video. Yeah. yeah. Do I believe Bitcoin will reach one million per Bitcoin in five ten? Um. See. Uh, one million is a lot. I don't really like making financial predictions about it. I mean, I, I believe a lot more. I mean, I, I believe a lot more in the, in like the protocol and in, in the technology and in the power of what that means more than necessarily making predictions about the, the price and the value of a Bitcoin. I think that that is still a little speculative. Um, but as far as the, the, climate and the industry as a whole, I think that that Bitcoin will eventually um, level out. Like right now, it's still really volatile. There's lots of there's lots of movement, too much movement for it to be a real story. So some people call it like digital gold, right? Mm -hmm. Where it's like a bellwether. And I think there's an element to that, don't you? Yeah. What do you mean? What do you well, mean? so if there's like, like a about, store of value, it is definitely store of value, right? So that's a feature of money or M1 or M2, mm -hmm. any money supply. And, but gold is now something that you, people use to hedge. Yeah. Right. So anytime there's volatility, they're looking to get into something right, that that's, you know stores their value, 
if everything blew up and burned down tomorrow. Yeah. So I think there's an element of that, don't you? Th there will be. I think right now, and there there is right now, I think it's just still a little... The movement is still a little too extreme to be to be able to be really used as a store of value or as a hedge, but I think that that's where it's going. So not that I'm saying that people shouldn't use it as a store of value, but it's not something that you, you really should only be putting... Anyway, I don't like giving financial advice, but like... You're not. I always say, this is not financial advice. So as a, as a technology, let's call it a, let's call it a blockchain... Yeah. Right. As opposed to an actual currency, but it's the one thing I was, was interesting is if you want to buy another cryptocurrency, don't you usually need to have Bitcoin? Bitcoin or Ethereum? Yeah, almost right. always. Like it, it depends what what you're buying, but you pretty much have to have Bitcoin or Ethereum to get into any of the other cryptos. Um, very few of them, and I think even less moving forward are going to be able to take fiat. Okay. All of them now, you do need to have. You can't really get in um, other than with those two, but. Uh, some some places are changing, although like the exchanges, you have to always be careful because any any of the centralized exchanges, remember, like they are centralized, and mm -hmm. anything that you're keeping money on like is coin based. Usually, people say is maybe if you want play, but really, if you want to start storing value, you wouldn't stick with coin base, right? Well, I mean, you don't because they're the ones that own the key, right? Sort of. So, I mean, you don't want to you don't want to have any good good deal of money left on an exchange, right? So, right now, there's a couple. Um, there are, there are starting to, there are going to be more decentralized exchanges. And when it comes to things like atomic swaps and um, all these different ways that people are going to be able to exchange their coins more quickly, mm -hmm. then that's going to dramatically improve and, the, and the And the speed you're talking about is because it takes crunching to release more coins, right? Like no, it, it's actually just, really, it really comes down to availability, right? So, oh, that too. so the, the liquidity, liquidity in the market, right? There's As not a lot of liquidity to, in the market. You're, you're not talking about mining. No, no, I'm talking right. about trading and exchanging. So right. when there's not a lot of liquidity in the market or when people are holding up the transaction, so it doesn't happen as much anymore, but sometimes there there's what's called like kind of like a paywall. So someone will put in like buy order for a really large quantity mm -hmm. and then nothing else can really move until that's fulfilled. Uh, I see what you're so so when, it's like clearing the market in a sense. It's like waiting till it's fulfilled. To... Right, like if someone puts in like a ten thousand mm -hmm. dollar or like I mean that's not that much, but someone are putting like a hundred thousand dollar buy order for mm -hmm. a certain crypto, and if there's not a lot of available liquidity for that, then it's that person's order is gonna have to get fulfilled before any other ones happen. And the only other way that so like Maybe I, you can correct me if I'm wrong. My understanding is there's two ways to get new coins. Not coins, just coins. One is from someone that has it. Mm -hmm. The other is the miners who are doing extreme calculations to release a new block. Is that right. part of the block? Right. Now, there's only a couple of cryptos that you can mine right now. So, yes, that's true, depending on what you're talking about. So, right. in yeah, in Bitcoin's case, for sure, that's, that's true. From someone who has one or from mining. Um, some of the newer, I mean, I don't know if you want to call them altcoins or, or the coins that are being the put out now in a lot of ICOs. Yeah, yeah. Got it. yeah, those ones, I mean, obviously, you can just buy them. Oh, you just buy them. Right. With, like, exchange, I mean, you exchange fiat to, like, Ethereum or to Bitcoin, and then you use that to, to buy into an ICO. But um, we're totally hijacking this interview that I'm supposed to be doing I was right now. I going to ask about crypto anyway, because so, I think it's interesting. And, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, seeing 22. 22 viewers, so. that's pretty good. No, it's not. No? No. You have like 12,000 followers? Exactly. So that's like bad. But you know, like... I don't think people are used to you doing it though. It, it won't even pop up. Oh, okay. It, There's no except for the, thing. Well, there is, but watch. So when you go... Is Instagram sure. your favorite social platform? Yeah. Is it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So see here, like right here even, I don't see like hardly any... I don't see any lives. Guaranteed someone I know is live right now, but I don't mm -hmm. see any. Cause oh, it weird. Because it's like the people I normally watch, right? Oh, I see. So it's like the people I normally watch. I feel like I keep getting notifications from like five people. Yeah, exactly. But then if I slide through... Because they started using like Facebook algorithms, right? Oh. So you can have it as a general setting in Instagram, like show me when people go live that I follow. Oh, okay. Or you can have it like per person if they go live, or someone just happens to be looking at Instagram at the time. But mm -hmm. now that you can share your live stories, like it's... Okay, yeah, so I shared it, so cool. it'll show. Yeah, I did a live it's one time, valid. and I was, I was like, so disappointed, because... Oh, why? Because I, I think there was, like, 30 or 40 people that were that were on I the live with me. That. But I, 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 was, I was, like, <laughs> so disappointed, and I was like, why is no one watching it? And then... If I have 30 people show up tonight, is trying to cry? Well, no, that, that would actually... People. In person, that's, that's oh, huge, right? Oh, you think it's different online? Yeah, for sure, and especially when you look at, like, you know, ratios. And, and I, I had to, like, actually... 
tell myself like Kim, don't let your don't let your ego get in the way here because mm-hmm. <laughs> I know I don't do lives. And I, right, right. I when I when you do stories on Instagram too, I mean, or if I haven't done a lot of stories that I'm talking in, like if I'm just doing like a photo, a quote, a this, oh, yeah, yeah. it's the interaction's really low. I mean, it's there, but it's low. And then if I post more that have like me talking, mm-hmm. or if I'm posting more on my feed in general, it's like tripled. That's interesting. So you're saying, for example, that it makes sense that people are more interested in you. That's why they're following, not necessarily what you're showing, but what you are saying. Yeah, like if I do some of the little like things where I'll talk about something, um, it'll go up. And if I do that two or three days in a row, the engagement will climb. And then if I kind of don't do that for a week, it'll mm-hmm. plummet. Oh wow! It's interesting. Like, it's it's so reactive. And now very, you very have quickly a, reactive. A, a, like a fairly sizable following on Instagram, right? They have like twelve. Yeah, about twelve thousand. Yeah. Twelve thousand. And I think you had said before, because I, I had asked this, how did you build that mm-hmm. out? Yeah, it was over time. So was, and I knew that the platform would be good for something. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I knew like a following <laughs> would be good for something sure. eventually, Makes right? Sense. So I, and we were building blank. Like we had, we, it's not like we weren't working on it. We were. It just we weren't about to launch anything yet, mm-hmm. but I also knew it doesn't build up overnight. No, like it's true. continual effort, right? It's continual effort. So uh, I will say that I was kind of lucky when I decided I would really want to push and grow my Instagram. I think I was about at like twenty, twenty five hundred between twenty five hundred and like three thousand followers at the time, and. That was still when a service, what was it? Oh, okay. Called? So do you so remember Instagress? I, I don't, know. I'm probably late to the game. So Instagress, um, some people don't like it, but you know, I was a fan of Instagress. So Instagress was an automation tool. You could really abuse it though if you wanted to, but if you did it and you used it properly, I thought it was super helpful. So what you could do is you could set it up to like certain hashtags, to you know like certain types of um, photos, maybe that's based on like a geotag or a hashtag mm-hmm. or the followers of another person. So you could you know, like yeah. Gary Vee's followers. I want a similar like, audience. Right, too. a similar audience. Yeah. And to handle because a lot of the comments were horribly obvious that it was a bot commenting. But so I never I right. never did the comments. I just would, you know, like the photos or it's or like two whatnot. hands up symbol. Yeah, like <laughs> no, I just like like it, right? Well, it it's funny because like whenever it. I see someone doing like Good job. Yeah. I know that's fake. Right? Or it's like, this picture, great. <laughs> they might be real, but their comments definitely fake. Right. right? <laughs> so the good thing, though, about that is it kind of, it like spreads your, like your seed out there a lot. You know, you go like all these photos and then someone will be like, oh, who's this person that liked my picture? They'll come look at my profile. And if they like what I have, then yeah. oftentimes they would follow me or they would like or they would message me. And when that happened, then I was like, oh, here's a person that is enjoying what I'm posting. So then I would interact with them and I'd comment back. So it was kind of like a cool way of like billboard advertising where you could you go find. In, yeah, yeah, it was like yeah. A, it was like a lead generation. That makes course. sense. Yeah. yeah. And then yeah. It, I mean, I would, get, I would get pretty high engagement back. So I don't know if it was a thousand. Maybe it was more like 400 or something. But you would get like probably 10 percent of the That's people great. that would come back and follow you or also like your stuff or send you a message or comment on some of your photos. So, yeah, you would just like. I like to talk about is around automation, obviously around mm-hmm. marketing, and I guess what I'm curious about is so you've got the following, you got a pretty reasonable side following, I think. Um, what's come of that? Like, what it, what's the conversion, so to speak, right. for you? Like, how does that benefit you to this point? Like, did it work out the way you thought? Do you have quality people that you interact with? Partnerships, anything? So yeah, I, well, so I met me, you on Instagram. Yeah, I know. That's cool. <laughs> I'm, I'm a lunatic, though. So I'll, I'll talk <laughs> no. to anybody. So. No, that's good. Not that you wouldn't. I, no, no, no. I mean, not talk to me. I'm like the least easy to offend person. Don't worry. So how dare you? Yeah, I mean, so when so when I was like really pushing hard um, for the first I'd say year, mm-hmm. I was trying to I was really trying to post every single day. I looked at a lot of analytics, and uh, I saw that around nine thirty in the morning was a good posting time for me based oh, on sure. where I am. You can check. I think. Um, is it Hoot, one, Hootsuite or one of the oh, services, they have like yeah. a free tool. So it was like 9.30 and 12.30 or some of those times because then you get your East Coast and you get your West Coast audience, uh, okay, you know? Got it, yeah. But I mean, posting twice a day is, is tough, it's so tough. I would yeah. at least aim for once a day. And I, I, I was pretty diligent posting once a day for a while. I tried, you know, I would work on all my content over like the weekend and then like post it, I'd oh, do wow. like a week's worth of content. Okay. You really worked at it then. I did. It took a lot of time. Like it really did take a lot of time. And um, I would also research hashtags and I would do all these comparisons. I'd check which hashtags worked, which ones would get me in top posts. Wow. wow. i try to use those ones. Like there's a lot. Um, so yeah, I mean, I always use all 30 hashtags and I always use a location. I think that that's helpful just because 
It's 30? just an, is, that, is that the magic number? Yeah, 30. 30. Can we use 30? Unless they change every now, but it's 30, yeah. I'm like a total spy. I have a notepad in my phone where I, I have, have like four. hashtag lists of different types of posts that I make. See, this is how bad I, I am because I would watch people and they put all these hashtags on and I'm like, that's just ridiculous to me. Yeah, I put it in a comment <laughs> underneath, so I do like a comment I, right away. So you split it off from So the, it's not in the main post, but I also do that it. for another oh, reason. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay, not I just because I don't think it's aesthetically pleasing, I also do it because from my Instagram, I'll post to Facebook and Twitter with the same post, like I have it set up. So if you keep the hashtags out of it, then um, those posts look good on those the platforms. other platform. Right. Which is what I think one of the things I liked about Instagram, which is, first of all, it's photo-driven. Mm -hmm. And I'm sick of hearing what people think all the time. <laughs> because it's pretty scary, especially in the yeah. United States. So I'm like now in the U.S. And it's weird times, right? It so, is, yeah. Um, but I think the photo element, but then the fact that it, it deals with Twitter and it deals with Facebook for me, I don't have to touch it. Okay? Right. But yes. I'm like, I'm definitely not a social media maven. Like, I don't have the thing figured out. And I'm not a growth hacker type guy. Mm -hmm. I don't think that... You seem to have a little bit more analytical approach to it. Uh, I do. You, you pay it's attention just, like, to details that I would like... I'm more of a brute force, you know? Like, yeah. <laughs> I like them. I like looking at the math and the statistics and oh, all that. There we it's go. fun. But some, you can get... <laughs> you know, it can get a little... A little too much sometimes, too. So I just got to balance it, but... Yeah, I would get brain overload and it would stop me from doing things. Yeah. So I spent a good amount of time, like probably a solid year, um, trying to grow the audience. And then once it went over, so then, so then Instagram stopped, along with all the other oh, blog so your, your superpower was but, like um, kryptonite. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of the other, there was a bunch of them. I, I, um, but, but Instagram pulled, you know, blocked all of those services. From the API. Or yeah, so you weren't it. allowed to, to use them anymore. Yeah, <laughs> sure. <laughs> I feel like social media really does allow people to find like-minded people. That makes sense. So, you know, I mean, you were talking about small towns. I'm from right. Windsor, originally. Oh, okay. Really? Yeah. Oh, okay. So, you know, there growing you up in a, in a smaller town, like you can generally find a lot more people like you. So that's one thing where I found being able to just talk about what I'm interested in and do things that I am, like, honestly, most of the stuff I like, post, like, that makes sense. everything I post and... is, like, what I've been thinking about or what I've been looking into myself, what I've been researching or investigating. I usually post a quote every morning on my story and... It's always something that's I've come across, or something that's like it's kind of in a way. It's kind of I like a cool. To this. <laughs> sort of. I don't like fame. That's the weird thing. I yeah. like my ideas out there, but the infamy part mm -hmm. is a little bit. You know, there's a limit for me. Maybe I don't know about you. Like, if you, what if your what if your followers grew to like a million? I, I mean, it's funny because that's still not really that famous. So it is it, like it sounds. It sounds crazy to say so that, but it's really million? not. Like one million is really not that. Really? You could, no. Wow. It, you could you could just be out in the world like living life. I mean, you would probably still come across some people that are like, oh, I know you. Really? You think so? For sure. There's. You know, what I bumped are... into at the airport the other day. It was in front of me, and I really have to apologize to him. Yeah. Is, is that Casey Nisa? You know Casey Nisa. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Do you know him? Yeah. He. Oh, I, I spoke with him at the last case. That's hospital. what it was. Okay. Yeah. I thought I saw that somewhere. I couldn't remember what it was. He was here actually a couple weeks ago too, I think, for another another event. But oh, he said that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, I bumped into him in the security line in the airport. I said, "Oh, you're Casey." He goes, "Yeah." And he was waiting for you know him to be tackled. Yeah. Him. And I I think I, my instinct when I meet people they should shake their hand. <laughs> and then I felt really bad. I was like, oh, I just made him shake my hand. <laughs> oh, why? I don't know. It just seems to me if you have like nine or ten million people following you. And let's say 0.1% of those people meet you and they want to actually shake your hand. That's got to be overwhelming. And that's what I felt coming off of them. Yeah. I wasn't sure. And I was like, I felt instantly bad. But I was like, I didn't want to pull it away. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe it depends on the person. Maybe or or okay. the environment. Maybe like security line at the airport. It was just like the environment. I don't know. Yeah. But you thought I was like TSA. I mean, time, 9 or 10 million is, is a lot more than 1 million. Right? Sure. Well, so, I mean, those are both pretty big audiences, though. It, it is. And don't get me wrong. If there was a million people following me, I'd be super happy. Would you? See, yeah, of course. Okay, I of think course. I'd be freaked out. But it probably is important to have that, right? I think there's a bit of... A, mm -hmm. um, I'll get the odd comment that's just like half broken English. Like, <laughs> like sexy lady, uh, lovely. And I'm like... I got that too? Just, I just don't I know, answer I've those ones. But Actually, maybe I I get ones in Arabic. Maybe that's what it's saying. Yeah, yeah. Right? I've only then, got like, a couple of Then, like, you obviously are not. Yeah. yeah. Maybe you read English and you think I read Arabic. I don't know. Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> but, yeah, it's going to be for fun. Yeah. But if you really are putting out a lot of, I guess, your own 
work or your personality or who you are, it's kind of like a little weird resume in mm -hmm. a way. You know, like a There's bio. There's probably a point where though you cross that chasm and you just you're done. You keep going. Yeah, like a lot of times I'll, you know, I, I don't say it to be, you know, to be flippant, but I'll say <laughs> if you know someone's like, oh, so what are you about or like what are you interested in? Part of me I just want to say, well, like, don't you know? No, I, I would just don't say you know like you know, am? not a, not like that, but more no, like you know, they're fine sure. and. Not as much as other no, people. No, you can do a little bit of research and kind of figure out the basics, right? And in, But doesn't I mean, that seem creepy, though, too? Not at all. You don't need your company. No. If someone comes okay. up to me and they say, oh, I saw this post that you made, mm -hmm. I would I would be happy. Because, again, it takes so much time to do that. That makes sense. Like, it does take a lot of work. It does take a lot of effort. I mean, I don't just do over an hour. Wow. Depending on what you're posting about. Jeez, so I never thought of that. I, I think yeah. I just do things really fast. I mean, I mean like I my what it is, but five days, right? that's insane. That's totally insane. Like, how is she going to do it? I, I hear people that do it in a year, and it's to me, I just think I would probably veer off, and it wouldn't be as good. Mm -hmm. Whereas I think if I have really focused attention on something, and I'm like, no, this is the outcome, I'm going to do it. Right. That's why I say I'm kind of like brute force, right? Like, <laughs> it's yeah. like, I'm not going to judge it. I'll fix it later. That's sometimes a good way, though. You just like power through it. I mean, there's probably mistakes. In the, I know there's mistakes in the first print. Mm -hmm. But... But then the idea gets through, mm -hmm. right? I think that's what's more important. That's awesome. All right, so I'm just going to ask you a couple things. So we did talk about some stuff that we had talked about before, which was, and you know, we talked about blank, obviously. Mm -hmm. I really, I, I'm, I'm glad you talked about your social media experience because I think you've got a good footing there and you've got some interesting insights. We talked about crypto and blockchain, which is yeah, fun, and that was totally random, actually. Totally. For, um, the one thing I was kind of curious about is really, okay, you're. In in a Reader's Digest version, I don't want you to overwhelm yourself with it. But what what made you want to kind of do your own thing? Like be an entrepreneur? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, the super condensed answer, which I can expand on, but the super condensed answer is, I kind of just always felt like it, it really was kind of intrinsic. Really? Yeah. <laughs> so even when I was younger and living in Windsor, I I started off like one of my after I guess my very, very early jobs, once I was able to, I started serving, like waitressing and oh, bartending. Okay. Yep. Because I always, the idea that someone would tell me like the maximum I could make, no matter how amazing I was or right. how great I worked or how much extra effort I put in, that just didn't never really made sense. Didn't to sit me. Well with you. No, I was like, you know, if I'm willing to you want that freedom put in the extra effort, that then makes sense too. I want the upside and I'm okay with taking the risk that this might just be a completely shit night. And I might make four dollars, you know. Like I, that risk was okay with me, and I was always really comfortable with it because I, I believed in you know my own ability, I guess, to to learn the craft and to work hard and to see where I could improve and to I don't want to say game the system because no, it's not, it's not like cheating, but like you yeah. learn you learn what what yeah. what the eighty percent sure. or the twenty percent that will provide the, the 80%. rules aren't in this leaf. It's not gonna. It's not rules that are like stymieing. Right. right, so you're trying to understand if I do more, what do I get more out of? Right, and how can I exploit certain things that I'm really great at, and maybe like help to correct or work on some things that are maybe not my biggest strengths or skill set? So that was always something that was just uh, that's like made sense to me. That's interesting. So, so and there was no like entrepreneurial mentor or influence not at all. You. No, like wow. actually, my I mean, that's awesome. My parents like I love them to death, but. My dad's an accountant, my mom is a nurse, oh, okay. so super just, you know, long-term kind of jobs, hmm. get a good job, you know, go to college, get a good yeah, job, yeah, yeah. pension, like Which that I never was... believed in personally, by the way. No, but that was all I knew, and I didn't know That's any entrepreneurs growing up, like none hmm. were close to me, so I I didn't realize that I had this kind of entrepreneurial thought process, but I guess I did. Yeah, for sure. That's and, really unique. And then I went to, um, I went to, there's kind of two separate things that happened. One is I went to a conference with a friend of mine. And it was the secret, so there was like speakers from the secret. Oh right, okay. There, and this is kind of when we were still. Wow, I have an interesting thing to bring up about this. Yeah. Go ahead. So when we were like starting <laughs> to think of, of running a business, so that yeah. kind of started a personal development, entrepreneurial journey. Okay. But I also, I mean, just to really briefly touch on this part of the story, although the whole thing is long, I spent some time living in LA. Okay. And it was there that I saw, you know, I would meet other people that were my age or maybe just mm -hmm. a little older. I know they had nice cars and they were like had all this money and I was like, who are these people? Like, are they famous? Are they music producers? Are they drug dealers? Like, I have no idea. And then because those are the options in Windsor. Well, I mean, as far as I kind of like that was kind of my thought that those yeah, are yeah. options for sure. like young people with of money, course. right? Yeah, yeah. But then I learned that like no, they're entrepreneurs. 
you know, I met a guy, he had like this online digital marketing SEO company mm -hmm. and he had this gorgeous house in Malibu oh, wow. and actually I'm Jeez. still friends with him now, but you know, there's these people that I would meet and I would learn what they did and I'm like, oh my gosh. I'm like, so you just invent something out of thin air and you turn it into money. Like that was incredible to me. That was like That's someone awesome. just... So the creation and the result. Yeah. The like, fruits of being taking the risk and having an idea and doing something dramatic with it. Yeah. And I kind of grew up being like very much in the creative fields as well. Like I danced and I acted. I was in musical theater. So creativity was always a big part of my life. And this kind of seemed like it was a great way to apply creativity and logic and like math and science kind of mix it all together. Interesting. So, wow. yeah. So you have, the, awesome. you have the, you have the, you have a lot of the characteristics that I would identify as a growth hacker. So I don't know if you, you, you probably don't identify as that because I think that's probably too limiting a label for you. No, I mean, I don't, that's, so, I hope I'm a growth, like that's like the best thing you can do. Is it? Oh, well. okay, well, see, for me, I, I look at that and I'm like, that is not something I would do. Like, <laughs> I would have the idea and I can create stuff and it, I need those type of people. Mm -hmm. And if I don't have them, then sometimes things, you know, lose their interest in my brain, right? Right. <laughs> But, so I think that's a good thing. Yeah, I mean, I think in any company, especially a digital company where you're trying, well, that, that would be where you're trying to really grow exponentially, mm -hmm. having some growth hacking mindset yeah. strategies. Oh, for sure. It's helpful. But I mean, I mean I'm mean, i glad you say that. I, I don't know if I would have considered myself a growth hacker, but I hope so. I think so. I mean, I tend to think that's, you know, when you kind of take that science mm -hmm. and the art and, you're, and that's what it ignites you and you're excited about it and you're willing to go down deep to figure out what things mean right. and then make adjustments, That's I think that's consistent with that personality type. Awesome. Yeah. And it's probably too limiting, like I said. You're probably you're more than that, like I think. I think you're, well, that's probably your bent, though. That's probably where... Yeah. I mean, I don't know if it has to be only that, right? That can be like a... Yeah, it's a part. Yeah, it's a part. It's yeah. a part. Okay, so um, the other thing that we talk about is about transformational digital technologies and applying it to your business problem. So I'm going to ask you a big question. Okay. And I'm going to ask for a short answer. Okay. What are you working on that's going to change the world? Oh, well, the short answer. I use the word universe when we talked, but yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll limit it to just the world. Okay, yeah, until Elon can get us to Mars, <laughs> it'll just have to be. It'll it's just have to be. Apparently, going to happen sooner than we think. <laughs> yeah, so Elon, we're waiting on you. Um, blank is the short answer. I mean, that's a one-word answer. Blank. Um, now, if you want, like a sentence. It, it just yeah. yeah. Sure. You can. Well, through blank, <laughs> being able to. It really is completely changing the way that software is built and how we think about software as it exists today. So, great, and it, and that's a huge problem, right? Like, I think that if, think about this: 2017, iPhone came out. 2007, eight, yeah, crazy. 2007, 2008, that's crazy, App Store, right? Yeah, when it's you crazy, think about years. it, this this entire thing has changed everything, mm -hmm. right? And it's not just one device, but everything kind of evolved after that. You know, we had BlackBerry, a good Canadian story that. You know, change the demand curve though with iPhone, and we've been riding that. So, yeah. what's the next ten years? Is I think it's those other things, right? You know, applying one of those six transformational, maybe seven. I think blockchain is in there. So, but so that's interesting. So you're 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 taking a problem that was created out of that ecosystem, which is it's still a software project today, right? Yeah. So today it's a software project, and you're trying to make it so that it's more accessible. I think is that. For sure, it will definitely be more accessible, and I think you, know, you could get from place to place. But once someone said, "Oh, what used to take you, you know, three weeks," because the expectation is now is now going to take you that six makes, hours, that makes total sense. then now it, now that's three weeks really right. seemed like a problem. Whereas now I just don't want to stand in line to get on the airplane. True, and now now we need like you know the <laughs> that's why I have clear. Yeah. Well, well, yes. Yeah. Nobody signed up for clear. Oh, it's clear. It's like even better than Nexus. I don't even know what clear is. Yeah. I know just no Nexus and Global Entry. Oh, those are those are okay. Who do you have to be to get clear? Like, okay, I'm gonna look. You gotta, you will, gotta hook me I'll, up. I'll share it, share it with you later. Because then you might. I don't as long as I don't need my DNA. Do I don't know if Canadians can do that. See, I'm I'm Canadian, but I'm also American. You have dual. I yeah. do have dual. Lucky. I actually have tried. With what other country? Ireland. Hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. global citizen. That's good. Yeah. Anyway, I need, you need to get a passport. My... I need, I need my other one in case, you know, extradition or something. Oh, like, no, what? <laughs> not really, not really. We can talk about this off camera. <laughs> All right, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wrap it up by saying thank you. This has been a lot of fun. I think this is not enough time even because we could probably go, we could off go on forever. We yeah. could definitely do that. So um, thank you for sharing some 
wealth of information in a very short amount of time. And uh, anything else you want to say? Anything you want to promote? Um, well, obviously, I mean, blank is my company, so. Get blank. Yeah, the com. website's getblank.com. Yeah. It's going to be, I mean, I don't know when this is going to come up, but we're going to have quite a bit of changes coming up um, into the new year on the website. Um, some new things that we're incorporating, which will be very exciting. Cool. And, you know, I'm going to have some news to share, hopefully sooner rather than later, but, you know, <laughs> some some things take a little bit while when you're waiting on yes. policy and things like that. But, um, yeah, I have a bunch of new things to share and uh, prototypes and things that will Where can people, people find you? You can find me on Instagram at Kim Big K. So Kim and then like big, like big and small. Big K. Big K. Uh, Twitter is the same handle. Up. Kim Big K. Yeah, I'm gonna so give you that for Christmas. <laughs> Twitter is same <laughs> handle. I'm on Facebook and LinkedIn if you just search Kim Parnell. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thanks so much really for having me. Appreciate you. We'll talk to you later. Yeah. My sister's calling me. Oh no. This has been an episode of the Automate and Grow podcast. Check out other episodes for interesting topics on how to grow, innovate, and automate your business. Subscribe or like us on iTunes, YouTube, Google Play, or on our website at www.automategrow.biz and get your copy of the book Automate and Grow at Amazon today.